the radiant embrace of Christ, a life once flourished abundantly, anchored in faith, a life that was a testament to joy, purpose, and spiritual fulfillment, blessed with the fullness of God's grace, now became a slave to sin, the shadows of doubt and distraction crept in, leading to a path of destruction. As she turned away from Christ, the once vibrant life took a somber turn. Are you still in Christ? If you have these habits, you are far from Christ. Good morning, sister. Good morning, Andrea. How are you doing? I feel better this morning. Are you going out now? No, Andrea. I woke up a few minutes ago. Good. Let's go and have our morning devotion. Remember, we need to start the day with God. Absolutely, Andrea. Our parent taught us right before they passed on. In everything, we must put God first. God first always. So, sister, I'll read the Bible today and take the message. You will lead us in prayer. Woman of God, your wish is my command. Anything for you. Let's go. That's me. The book of Psalm 103, 8-12 says the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. This passage highlights the boundless mercy of God. It emphasizes his compassion, patience, and love, reminding us that God does not deal with us based on our sins but extends forgiveness and removes our transgressions. The imagery of the heavens and the east from the west emphasizes the vastness of his mercy. As recipients of God's mercy, we are called to respond with reverence and gratitude, recognizing the depth of his love and seeking to reflect that mercy in our own lives. May the Lord bless the reading and teaching of his word. Amen. Over to you, sis. Dear Heavenly Father, as we open our eyes to a new day, we are grateful for the gift of life and the opportunities it brings. Lord, we come before you in awe of your greatness and sovereignty over our lives. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We confess our sins and shortcomings, laying them before your throne of grace. Thank you for the forgiveness and cleansing that your mercy provides. Your mercies are new every morning, and we are humbled by your unfailing love. Lord, we seek your grace to sustain us throughout this day. May your grace empower us to walk in righteousness and live according to your will. Guide our steps, O Lord, and direct our path in the decisions we make. Lord, we ask for your protection over our lives, our loved ones, and every aspect of this day. Be a shield around us, guarding us from harm and evil. Grant us the strength to face any challenges that come our way, knowing that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Father, we need your wisdom to make sound choices and decisions. Illuminate our mind with your truth and grant us discernment in every situation. We surrender our plans and concerns to you, trusting that your grace is sufficient for us. As we intercede for others, we lift up their needs before you. Bless them with your peace, healing, and spiritual growth. May your grace abound in their lives as well. In this moment of quiet reflection, we listen for your voice. Speak to our heart, Lord, and let your word guide our thoughts and actions today. Thank you for your abounding grace and mercy that accompany us on this journey. Lord, we pray that your protection will be with Andrea, as she start her training program today, we pray that you be with her and teach her what to do and what not to do during this course of six months. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for remembering me in your prayers, sis. If I do not pray for you, who else should I pray for? Andrea, please make me proud. I do not want to regret ever allowing you go for this professional training. Ensure you come home at least thrice in a week. It costs you nothing to come home every day, 
but I want you to be focused. Do not forget God, hold steadfast unto the word of God. I'm glad you are deeply rooted in Christ, nothing can shake you. Please, study the word of God and pray at all times. Remember that in everything. God first sister. I promise you that nothing can take the love of Christ from me. That's my sister. I love you Andrea. Pastor Mary, I love you too. Hello. Hi. How may I help you? I am going to the admin department, but I do not know how to get there. Can you help me please? Oh, it's fine. Just walk towards the door. Before you step out, you'll see a building in front of you. Walk towards the building and enter the reception. The second door on the left is the admin office. Thank you so much. I am grateful. You are a nice person. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. I am Tracy Wellington. I'm Andrea by name. Andrea Jacob. Beautiful name. Nice to meet you Andrea Jacob. Nice to meet you Tracy Wellington. Tracy Wellington? That name sounds familiar. Smiles, my dad is a pastor. A popular church. GOG Ministries? Wow! It is an honor to stand before the daughter of a great man of God. I always listen to your dad's messages. They've been a blessing to me. I feel honored. You must be filled with God's words and Holy Spirit. What are you doing here though? To correct the first thing you said, I'm the exact opposite of my dad. And to the second question, I needed to satisfy my dad's educational request. He insists I go for a professional training, and here I am. Tracy, I know you are only teasing me, because your dad is a great man of God. You cannot be his opposite. Maybe you said that to avoid unbelievers. I know I'll benefit more if I'm friends with you. It will help my spiritual life. If that's what you want, it's okay then. Nice meeting you Tracy. I'll see you around. I'll come back here to see you. We can get to exchange contacts and hostel address. Let me quickly go and complete my registration before it closes. I'll see you later. All right, Tracy. Bye. Take care, girlfriend. All right. Did she just call me girlfriend and she blew me kisses? Andrea, stop overthinking. That was harmless. That lady is the only daughter of a popular and great man of God. She's definitely a prayerful lady. Being friends with her will make me spiritually stronger, plus, I'll get to meet her father and other anointed men of God. Thank you Jesus for this opportunity. Two months later, after becoming friends with Tracy, Andrea moved in with Tracy, all in a bid to become more spiritually strong and to meet important men of God. Andrea, I'm going out. It is very early, and by the way, we haven't observed the morning prayer yet. Andrea, morning prayer is not a must, especially for someone like me. Do you know how much I pray? I pray more than you in this house. Tracy, but I have never seen you pray. What's wrong? Don't look at me with the eyes. All right, fine. Let's pray. You will take the Bible reading a message while I pray. That's how my sister and I observe the morning devotion at home. <laughs> What's funny? You expect a daughter of a great man of God to start reading the Bible for morning devotion? Come in, Andrea, I've passed that level. I have read almost every verses in the Bible, I expect that if you are truly a Christian, you should have finished reading the Bible. The Word of God lives in your heart, not by reading every day, Andrea. I'm so disappointed that you haven't finished reading the whole Bible at this age of yours. Tracy, I'm also a Bible scholar. I just feel it is good if we remind ourselves of what God is saying every day. If that's it. Why read the Bible every day when you have lots of activities to do? Remember, we only have three months left here. We need to read. We don't have to lazy around. If at all you must pray, make it brief and do important things. You have a point. I can always read in my mind, or 
I'd rather take time to study now and get back to my Bible reading later. Not just Bible reading, Andrea, but quit long prayers too. Take your training serious. Do you understand? I am a child of God. You shouldn't doubt anything I'm telling you. All right, Tracy. But where are you going dressed like this? Your skirt is too skimpy and your top is armless. Your body is revealing in this dress. That's not nice. I hope you've read the part of Matthew that asked you not to judge. God only watches our heart, not our way of life. My dressing doesn't define my attitude and character. It doesn't stop me from being a child of God. It's all right, Tracy. So, when are we seeing your father? Or when are we going to your house? Do not worry, Andrea. You will get to meet my family soon. All right, Tracy. Let's just do a quick prayer then. Now, you are talking. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for protecting us and for guiding us. We thank you for the food we eat and the water we drink. Lord, we ask for forgiveness of sins. Please forgive us, O Lord. We commit today's activities unto your able hands, O Lord. Please take over. Let us experience your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. That was too long, Andrea. You can do better next time. By the way, I want to go and study. I have some food in the refrigerator and I have extra cash for you. When I come back, I have a surprise for you. See you later. I can't wait, Tracy. Thank you. Soon, prayer and Bible reading became a thing of the past in the life of Andrea Jacobs. She believes that if the daughter of a well-respected man of God can do without prayer and Bible reading, then she can as well, at least, she's still a Christian. She started compromising. She started going for dates. According to Tracy, they were harmless dates with some brothers. She would spend all her time watching irrelevant things and lots of time on social media. She started listening to worldly music. She dresses just like Tracy and she doesn't go home to see her sister again. She avoided everyone. In short, Andrea is no longer who she used to be. I feel so bad that I failed this exam. I thought I studied hard for the exam. My sister will be so mad at me. I haven't seen her in months. Passing exam is the least problem I have. Now that I have finished my exam, where will I go to again? I do not understand. What happened to your parents' house? I mean pass to Wellington's house. Andrea, it is a bad thing that we both failed our exam, but we can always come back to write the exam. That's if your parent can pay for another exam fee. But what about me? All hope is lost. Tracy, you are still speaking in parable. What are you trying to say? Is Pastor Wellington not your father? Andrea, he is, but he's not what you people portray him to be at home. He disowned me three years ago because he presumed that I am wayward and I don't live a Christ-like life. He's always angry at me. He wants to force Christ on me. After I refused, he said he'd rather disown me than allow him offend God. If he's a true man of God, is he not supposed to have forgiven me up till now? He banned me from coming home. I have been living with my grandmother. My mother told me to come for this professional training so that I can start working, but see now, I failed the exam. Ah, you were disowned? Why didn't you tell me? Ah, that's my story. But, am I really wayward? I just wanted to explore life and have fun. I am beginning to see the waywardness in you, Tracy. Ah, How did I get into this mess? Come off it, Andrea. Do not forget that we are both wayward now. Do not judge me, please. You made me fail my exam. You introduced me to things I don't do before. You lied to me. No wonder you have refused to take me to your parents all these while. Tracy. I'll never forgive you for what you've done. 
If only you had told me the truth from onset, I won't be in this mess. Tracy, I will never forgive you for hurting me. God will judge you. God will judge you too. Andrea, so you can come home? After avoiding me for over four months. Is this really you? I came looking for you, but you avoided me. I sent some people in the fellowship you attended to you, but you avoided them as well. They told me that you keep saying you already know God and there is no point going to church. They told me that you've become arrogant and mean. Why are you here now? Tell me Andrea. Sister, I am so sorry for disappointing you. I feel so bad for myself. Sister, I failed my exam. So many things has happened. You failed? Yes, sister. It wasn't my fault. Whose fault, Andrea? Mine. Why didn't God tell me the kind of person Tracy is? God should have protected me from seeing her in the first place, or at least, God should have prevented me from having opportunity to go for that professional training in the first place. Shut up, Andrea. I will give you dirty slap. How dare you? Are you blaming God now? Blame it on your greediness, pride, lukewarmness, lack of discernment and laziness. You are a disgrace, Andrea. Instead of you to make your light shine to others, you allowed someone's darkness to dim your light. I thought you were deeply rooted in Christ. I'm sorry, sister. Please forgive me. I have regretted my actions. Help me, sister. If you really love me, you will help me. I need your help right now. I have fallen out of Christ, sister. I no longer hear from God. I am now lazy to do many things. I found it difficult to read. That's why I failed. Sister, help me. I'm spiritually weak. I thought I was seeking for more power and strength, not knowing that I was approaching my doom. Help me, sister. It's fine, Andrea. It's good you've realized that you are spiritually weak. Thank God for that. Many Christians are in the world today and they fail to realize and accept that they have become weak Christians. They do not know that they have habits that has made them become weak. Sister, are habits capable of making one become spiritually weak? Yes, Andrea. There are habits and signs you need to take note of. These habits are capable of keeping someone spiritually weak. Come, let's sit and talk about it. As a believer, facing challenges is a part of your faith journey. Certain habits can harm your faith if you don't take responsibility for your relationship with God. Faith is like the strong foundation of our connection with God, giving our lives meaning, purpose, and guidance. Despite its importance, faith can be weakened by challenges. Let's talk about habits that can harm your faith and disrupt your walk with God. If we don't address these habits, they can damage our spiritual connection, hindering personal growth and transformation. Each of these habits is like a stumbling block that can lead us away from the right path and God's purpose for our lives. By recognizing these destructive habits, we gain the knowledge to fight against them. The first dangerous habit is neglecting or ignoring God's word. Ignoring God's word is a harmful habit that can seriously harm your faith. It's one of the riskiest things a Christian can do. The Bible tells us that God's word is powerful and can transform our lives. It's like a sharp sword that has divine power. However, if we don't regularly read, study, and think about the Bible, we miss out on the spiritual nourishment our souls really need. Neglecting God's word can lead to various problems. First, we become spiritually weak. Just as our bodies need food, our spirits need the wisdom and guidance found in the Bible. Without it, our faith becomes weak and lacking. Second, we become more likely to believe false teachings. If we don't know the Bible well, we can't tell what is true from what is false. We might fall for ideas that sound good but go against God's word. Third, we miss out on hearing from God and understanding his guidance for our lives. God often speaks to us through his word, showing us the right way. When we ignore the Bible, we are not listening to God's loving advice. We might end up lost. 
Fourth, we might start adopting values and behaviors that don't please God. The Bible teaches us what makes God happy. When we ignore it, we might start following values that make God sad. We need to stay grounded in God's word. Fifth, we won't have the strength to overcome challenges and temptations. God's word gives us the wisdom and power to stand strong against the enemy and face tough times. Without it, we are defenseless. Only the teachings from God's word can help us see through the lies of the enemy. The second dangerous habit is prayerlessness. Not praying is really risky for a believer's spiritual life. Regular and sincere prayer is how we connect closely with God. But if we treat prayer as something less important, our relationship with God can quickly weaken. That's why not praying is one of the habits that can harm your faith. One big problem when we don't pray enough is that we start to feel distant from God. Our hearts become cold, and we forget about His promises, power, and presence. Instead of relying on God's strength, we rely on our own, which can lead to all sorts of problems. Another issue is that we might not hear the guidance of the Holy Spirit. God often speaks to us during prayer, giving us a sense of direction. If we don't pray regularly, we might miss these subtle messages. This confusion can lead to making bad decisions and costly mistakes. Also, not praying leaves us defenseless against the attacks of the enemy. As Jesus told his disciples, some spiritual battles can only be won through prayer and fasting. Without regular prayer, we don't have the spiritual tools to overcome dark challenges. This makes us vulnerable to attacks from the enemy. Additionally, neglecting prayer hinders the Holy Spirit's work in our hearts. We stop him from convicting us of sin, shaping us into Christ's image, and comforting us in tough times. Our growth in faith stops without his transforming power. The solution from the Bible is to commit to consistent, heartfelt prayer. We need both longer times of close connection with God and short prayers throughout the day. Make it a priority to never ignore this essential way of communicating with your Creator and Sustainer. The third dangerous habit is compromising with the world. As followers of Christ, we are meant to be part of the world but not let its values influence us. This means we should steer clear of adopting behaviors and priorities that go against what God teaches. When believers give in to the ways of the world, it weakens our connection with God and distorts the image of Christ within us. One problem is that we can become numb to sin. Being constantly exposed to ungodly media, music, and messages makes us less sensitive to what is wrong. Sin stops bothering us, and we get used to actions that make God sad. This is really risky for our souls. Another problem is getting too attached to the world's stuff. If we compromise with the materialistic culture, the pursuit of possessions, status, and pleasure can become more important than God. We should hold on to things that last forever, not temporary stuff. Compromising with the world also pushes God out of the first place in our hearts. This is why it's one of the habits that can harm your faith. When we give in to pressure from others and follow what's considered normal, pleasing people becomes more important than pleasing God. We lose our uniqueness as believers set apart for God. Moreover, if we compromise with the world, we might shy away from sharing the gospel boldly. We avoid standing out and hide our faith, embarrassed to be connected with Christ. We miss the chance to share the truth with a world that needs it. The only solution is to fully commit to following Jesus, no matter what it costs. We should follow the Bible's command, do not love the world or anything in the world. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father but from the world, 1 John 2 15-16. The fourth dangerous habit is being prideful or arrogant. Pride is really risky for a believer's spiritual journey. Basically, it's wanting to be God and taking credit for His glory. Pride shows up in harmful ways. Being proud or arrogant can seriously hurt your faith because it makes us blind to our own mistakes and need for a savior. 
A proud person thinks they don't need grace or forgiveness and refuses to admit they were broken. This stops them from receiving Christ's healing and redemption. Pride also stops us from learning. If you think you know everything, why would you listen to advice? A proud heart slows down spiritual growth and maturity. It acts like a know-it-all Pharisee who thinks they have all the answers. Pride invites God's discipline. The Bible says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble, James 4, 6. Going against God's authority is really dangerous. The solution is simple, humility. We need to admit we aren't God, bow down before Him, and fully rely on His grace. The fifth dangerous habit is being lazy and idle. Laziness and idleness are traps that believers must stay away from. God made us for good works and has specific purposes for each of us. When we are lazy, we waste these important callings. It makes us lose our sense of purpose, feeling aimless and worthless. God created us to make a difference in His kingdom, and idleness takes away our chance for lasting reward. Being lazy often leads to other sins. It gives the enemy a chance to tempt us into all sorts of trouble. Being diligent is a way to protect ourselves from making wrong choices. With God's help, every believer can beat laziness and live with discipline, passion, and zeal. We have to decide that being lazy is not an option if we want to shine for Christ and hear Him say, Well done. Another dangerous habit is isolating ourselves from other believers. God designed believers to be part of a community, not isolated. We aren't meant to follow Jesus alone. Yet, some people make the mistake of cutting themselves off from regular Christian fellowship. This is really bad for your spiritual health and is one of the habits that can harm your faith. When we isolate ourselves, there is no one to pray for us when we are down, and we miss out on wise advice when we are struggling. We also lack accountability to encourage us to love, do good things, and grow spiritually. Isolation leads to stagnation. Being alone makes us more vulnerable to believing lies. Without Christian friends to correct our thinking, we might easily fall for deception. The enemy wants to separate believers from the safety of the group and lead them into darkness. Moreover, there is no one to gently point out our mistakes when we isolate. We hide our flaws, and sinful habits thrive in secrecy. The path of isolation often ends in disaster. God's solution is to connect with the local church. The Bible tells us to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, Hebrews 10 24-25. Aim for active involvement in a Bible-believing community. It's crucial for finishing the Christian race well. Unforgiveness is another dangerous habit that drains one's spiritual strength. Holding on to grudges is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to get sick. The one who suffers the most from holding grudges is ourselves, not the person who hurt us. This bitterness can harm our connection with God and cause many problems. It's one of the most harmful habits that can hurt your faith. First, holding grudges affects our relationship with God. Jesus said if we don't forgive others, God won't forgive us, Matthew 6 14-15. Our prayers are blocked, and we distance ourselves from God. Second, not forgiving others takes away our peace and joy. Anger and resentment cause inner turmoil. We miss out on the blessings of living in grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Third, holding grudges can lead to hate and a desire for revenge. If not stopped, it can turn into hostile actions. This hurts our soul and goes against what Christ teaches. Fourth, we end up pushing people away when we hold on to bitterness. People don't want to be friends with someone who is always angry and resentful. Holding grudges is like being in a lonely prison we create for ourselves. Fifth, long-term grudges can lead to depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues. The person who refuses to forgive suffers more than the one who hurt them. These are some of the things that hurt our relationship with God because of holding grudges. 
God tells us to freely forgive others, because we've been freely forgiven. The Gospel is about getting grace we don't deserve. When we understand how much we've been forgiven, it helps us let go of the hurt others cause us. As we forgive, we can experience the joy of healed relationships and freedom from past hurts. Another dangerous habit is worrying too much. Worry is really harmful for a believer. Even though it might seem like we're in control when we worry, we're actually losing trust in God. This causes a lot of problems. The solution is straightforward, although it's not always easy. We need to stop worrying and start trusting Jesus with every situation and decision. When we do this, His peace will protect our hearts and minds. Philippians 4, 6-7 being discontent or ungrateful is a dangerous habit that weakens your spiritual life. Feeling discontent is risky and can slowly wear down our spirit. It's easy to compare ourselves to others and wish we had what they have, a bigger house, a fancier car, a higher paying job. We might look at their lives and think, why can't I have that too? However, this is one of the habits that can harm your faith. Being ungrateful and envious stops us from appreciating what we already have. Instead of wanting what others have, it's better to appreciate our own blessings. There is an old hymn that says, Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Another dangerous habit is being hypocritical or insincere. This is a real danger that can harm our Christian example. When our actions don't match our words, it makes us seem insincere, which turns people away. Even worse, it's not pleasing to God, who values truth and integrity. While it's easy to spot hypocrisy in others, it's much harder to see it in ourselves. We often don't realize when we're being spiritually fake. We might think our intentions are good while being too quick to judge others. But God sees our hearts clearly. Hypocrisy happens when we use Christian words, but our private lives don't reflect those values. It's good to spend some quiet time reflecting on our hearts and asking the Holy Spirit to show us if we are being hypocritical. Remember what Jesus said, we need to deal with our own issues before trying to correct others. Andrea These habits require the help of God and Holy Spirit. You need to retrace your step back to God. Go back to God in prayer and ask for forgiveness. Invite the Holy Spirit back into your life. According to your best Bible verse about God's mercy, God's willing to come back into your life. Start reading your Bible and studying the Word of God. With God, all things are possible. Andrea, go back to your father and seek him. Wow! Thank you, sister. Sister. All these you said were my habits while I was in school. I became proud about my little knowledge of the Word of God. I became lazy to study the Word of God and to study for my exams. I stopped praying, I became ungrateful. Sister, we shouldn't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Thank you for opening my eyes to this. I'm blessed. All thanks be to God Almighty. Do not worry, sister. We'll do this together. Thank you, sister. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a humble heart, acknowledging my shortcomings and sins. I confess my mistakes, known and unknown, and seek your forgiveness, for your mercy endures forever. Wash me clean, Lord, and create in me a pure heart. I am grateful for your boundless mercy, a mercy that surpasses all understanding. Your love is a refuge and I take refuge in your grace, pleading for your forgiveness and the strength to turn away from any path that leads me astray. Renew my spirit, O God. Strengthen me with your mighty hand, and let your Holy Spirit dwell richly within me. Grant me the courage to face my weaknesses and the wisdom to overcome them. May your Spirit guide my steps, leading me in the paths of righteousness. I surrender my will to yours, dear Lord asking for a renewal of purpose and commitment to live according to your divine plan. Fill me with the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Lord, grant me discernment to recognize the whispers of the enemy and the strength to resist temptation. May your word be a lamp unto my feet, guiding me in every decision and action. Let me be a vessel of your light, shining brightly in a world that needs your love. I pray for those I may have wronged, asking for reconciliation and healing where needed. May your love flow through me, mending relationships and restoring harmony. Thank you, Lord, for your immeasurable grace and the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. I place my trust in you, seeking your mercy, renewal, and the empowering presence of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Having known the dangerous habits that can keep you spiritually weak, the question is, which one are you guilty of? When last did you hear from God? Do you still pray like you used to? Do you still fellowship with God like you used to? If your answers are no, please, do the needful immediately and retrace your steps. Ensure you put God first in everything. May God Almighty not deny knowing you. God bless you.